It is a corner of paradise, devoid of human activity. Welcome to the realm of giraffes, elephants, hippopotami. Welcome to the Okavongo Delta, a unique place. A river reaching into the Kalahari Desert. Here in Botswana, water doesn't flow into the sea. It invades the land and stagnates for several months of the year, making this a rare geological area in constant movement. For the past 10 years now, a team of French geologists has taken interest in the Okavango Delta. Geology, tectonics, or sedimentology they take an interdisciplinary approach to understand this environment as a whole. To do so, they need to get to it first. Guided by Botswana scientists, they must drive for several hours on a sandy track and cross tricky fords. The problem is that it's actually quite deep. There's a flat bit, which is the alluvial plain where we're standing, and there's a ditch over there, which is the channel where most of the water flows. This ditch must be about 50 centimeters deep, and we must try to go through it. This time, the four-wheel drives cross it easily, but a few kilometers further on comes another Ford, and a car gets stuck. It will have to be winched out. The flood has come and is gradually swamping the delta. Every year, rainwater from the mountains in Angola seeps slowly down to reach Botswana a few months later and terminates in a so-called alluvial fan, creating a huge swamp. The slope is roughly 0.01 degrees, which is actually very, very flat. That's why the water takes six to eight months to subside. This is nothing like the floods we have back home, in the Pyrenees or the Alps, for example. Here it is a very slow phenomenon. Behind me, the water is currently rising by nearly one centimeter each day. With the flood, the study area is no longer accessible by road. The team must go by boat. A breathtaking yet dangerous journey. Besides crocodiles and elephants, they must zigzag between the many hippopotami, which, if they feel under threat, could grab the boat in their powerful jaws and capsize it. The team has reached the campsite, which belongs to the University of Botswana. Here, all year round, some of the country's biologists study the flora and fauna in this unique location. So when the pulse, when the pulsating flood lands here, when it's supposed to be very dry, you know, it inundates the, the, the shallowest flood plains and then the grass there suddenly becomes lush and it attracts all manner of birds, fish, uh, antelope, uh, large megafauna like the elephant, the hippo, and they make this a, a habitat. To study such a unique ecosystem, the scientists have set up many recording instruments a few meters away from the camp. This way, they can collect data about rainfall or wind on a daily basis. With every visit, they improve the installation. The weather data is the same as the days it took pictures. Today, a part of the high-resolution GPS needs changing. It records movements on the ground down to the nearest centimeter. We use this to measure the height of the ground. You must bear in mind that everywhere on the Earth's surface, this height nearly always varies. Here it moves two to three centimeters each year, while in the French northwestern region of Brittany, it goes up and down one centimeter every day. And here the vertical movements are linked to the flood that comes every year, representing 11 cubic kilometers or 11 billion cubic meters of water. In addition to these instruments, the team uses satellite imagery. But this is only possible provided it has been properly calibrated by checking on-site information. To do so, the scientists take measurements and photographs. 
What we're doing here is recording GPS coordinates in different places. For instance, behind us, the vegetation is grassy, so we'll be able to determine that in this specific location, there's grass, while here we're in a forest under trees. We can tell that a pixel is trees, and then we can compare this data from the field with that observed on satellite imagery. The scientists make the most of these few days in this exceptional location to collect a wealth of data that they will study in France throughout the year. Today, they will be drilling on Chiefs Island, an area a few kilometers away from the camp. There is no track there. They must help the four-wheel drive to make its way between the trees. No sooner have they arrived than the drilling begins. It will take several hours to reach the six-meter depth they're hoping for. The researchers must then carefully list each of the samples. These will be analyzed in Brittany, more than 11,000 kilometers away from here. What I'm doing here is every 30 centimeters or so, I take a soil sample that I describe in my notebook so that we can then carry out chemical and granulometry analyses on these samples to see what the soil contains. The researchers want to drill until they find water to understand why most of the trees on this island have died. Their hypothesis is that the groundwater table that naturally contains heavy metals has risen. Between 2006 and 2011, 12, most of the trees died, especially the acacias, which have very deep roots. We believe that it's this groundwater table here that, during a more abundant rainy episode with higher floods, came up to the surface and literally poisoned the trees. At 5.3 meters, there is still no water to be found, but the composition of the soil changes drastically. It goes from a dark clay sand to a very fine white sand, the team can't drill any further. A few meters away, the geologists have turned into woodcutters. They want to take slices of dead trees. Since analyzing their rings will help them find out the composition of the water absorbed. We want to look at the geochemistry along the ring to see whether there are any changes in chemical composition that could show that the tree was poisoned at one stage by water from the groundwater table. These operations enable the French researchers to go back in time several thousand years. And they also try to predict the future. They have noticed on satellite images that the delta sometimes reaches a river. Should the junction occur on a permanent basis, the delta could disappear. This is known as a capture. Part of the delta is flowing eastwards into the Lignanti River, which is directly connected to the Zambezi, itself connected to the Indian Ocean. Should this connection get much stronger than it is now, there will be a capture. This will lead to a large amount, perhaps even all the water reaching the delta, being caught and flowing into the Lignanti and Zambezi. As a result, there will be no water here, or at least very little. For once, the cause isn't human-induced. Here, there is no anthropic pressure, no human impact on the environment, this is a natural geological movement. But if this capture does occur, political decisions may help slow the leakage in order to preserve, for as long as possible, the Okavango Delta, the true jewel of Botswana. <laughs>